Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, and fitness enthusiast. I help clients resolve bloating, gas, and other digestive problems so they can look and feel their best. If you're new to my channel, I post one full-length new video every Monday and YouTube shorts daily throughout the week on gut health and fitness related topics. I wanted to make this video because unfortunately, it's super common for people who have had SIBO to relapse and get it again. Experts actually estimate that about two thirds of people that have had SIBO and had it tr even treated successfully, we'll get a relapse of SIBO again. To give some context on my personal story with SIBO, back in 2011, when I was in pharmacy school, I got a horrendous case of food poisoning. It was probably the worst 24 hours of my life. Between the stomach pain, nausea, constant vomiting, uh, I was pretty much laying on the floor for like 24 hours straight, unable to do anything. After a few days, kind of slowly improved. I thought everything was fine. But over the next several months, a lot of bloating, gas just kind of kept creeping up as well as other symptoms as well and I unknowingly had SIBO which lasted for the next eight years. I usually would feel pretty good when I woke up but then after I ate kind of throughout the rest of the day I just felt more and more bloated, more gassy and then finally in January of 2020 I did my SIBO treatment got rid of the SIBO. So January of this year marks the three-year anniversary kind of when I got rid of my SIBO. Knock on wood but I've been fortunate to be one of the one-third of the population of people who have not had a relapse of SIBO. There have been a few bumps in the road back in September this year when I was in Tahiti I got food poisoning and I had a few cases of loose stools this winter when I was in Argentina but despite this I have not had any SIBO symptoms return. Maybe I have got really lucky but based on my knowledge of SIBO and how bacteria kind of survive and colonize in the small intestine I feel that the things that I have been doing to prevent it have been very beneficial. I'm going to share the four basic things that I've been doing to prevent a recurrence of SIBO with you now. Each one of these does one of two things. The first is to make sure bacteria are transported through and out of the small intestine. This is the more important of the two things, but the second one is to prevent the growth and survival of bacteria in the small intestine. The first intervention I have was taking prokinetic. This helps with making sure that bacteria are transported properly through the small intestine and make it out into the large intestine where they should be. Immediately after my SIBO treatment, I did take two herbal prokinetics. One was Iberagast, which I put 20 drops into about about two ounces or 60 milliliters of water and I drank that in the middle of each meal so three times a day slowly discontinued and tapered that off over nine months or so until I stopped and I no longer take that now I also began taking one capsule of ginger root about 550 milligrams in the middle of breakfast every day and I haven't stopped doing that since I finished my SIBO treatment there's a lot of evidence that suggests that taking the ginger root at night before bedtime is a better time to do it this totally makes sense because the period of time before bedtime to when you eat breakfast the next day is usually going to be longer for most people as opposed to the period of time between breakfast and lunch. I just take it at breakfast because it's easier for me to remember and quite frankly I just haven't had any issues so I haven't really seen the need to switch that up. There are also prescription prokinetics which actually may be a better option if you can get one prescribed by your doctor as they have more data and research supporting their use for this purpose. For somebody like myself that got SIBO from food poisoning, probably going to be critical to use a prokinetic to support the movement of the migrating motor complex or MMC. The MMC is a system of smooth muscle and nerves in the small intestines and they work together to make sure that they sweep the whole entire small intestine clear of food and bacteria after you eat. If you get food poisoning, the bacteria that cause food poisoning release a toxin called cytolethal distending toxin B or CDTB. This toxin can disrupt the way that the MMC works. It's not 100% clear how long this disruption can last, but it is being considered now an autoimmune condition, and we think that it may be lasting for years. The second intervention is to go a full four hours or more in between eating meals and to not snack in between your meals. This helps make sure that bacteria are physically transported through the small intestine and out into the large intestine. I only eat three meals per day. Right now, I eat roughly at 8 a.m., 1 p.m., and 6 p.m. This kind of varies depending on the day of the week, on the weekend. It's usually a little bit later in the day I'll eat. But the most important thing is there's always a four hour gap in between meals. I do this to not disrupt my migrating motor complex and I have been ruthlessly consistent with this for the past three years. The MMC has two modes that it can be in at any time. It's either cleaning or it's not cleaning. The cleaning portion happens when we are not eating and the small intestine gets swept clean. It's kind of like after a party when you remove all the trash and the debris. But when we eat something, the MMC all of a sudden stops these waves completely 
completely. And it doesn't matter how much food you eat, it can be a few almonds, this will likely stop the work of the migrating motor complex. Once your body senses that food, it thinks, okay, we're eating again, and it stops doing that cleaning. I know there's a lot of people, myself being one of them for many years, that would graze, have small meals throughout the day, and snacks every hour or every couple of hours. Mid-morning smoothie here, coworker made Rice Krispie treats, oh, okay, I'll have a bite. If you're constantly doing this and snacking and grazing throughout the day, you're hindering your ability of your MMC to properly cleanse the small intestines. There is some debate on how long it actually takes for the MMC to do its job and fully clear the small intestine. Every person is also different with this. I just prefer to go at least four hours in between meals and I do this just to be safe and based on the recommendations of some other practitioners. The third intervention is digestion support supplements. These can prevent the growth of bacteria in the small intestines. So this is different than preventing the movement of bacteria through the small intestine. After I treated my SIBO, I was taking a high dose of betaine HCL in the middle of meals and also a strong digestive enzyme called Enzymatica Digest Gold. Over the course of several months, I slowly lowered my dosage of these and now I just take two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and one capsule of Enzymatica Digest Basic in the middle of each of my meals. To be clear, I mainly use these for digestive purposes, but these also may help prevent the growth of bacteria in the stomach and making it into the small intestine. A note of caution, if you are going to use these products, only use them in the minimum effective dose, the lowest dose that actually works for you. And don't just keep taking more and more in an effort to try to kill off bacteria. You can get a lot of symptoms and it can be dangerous for you to do so. So do not do this. As I mentioned before, if you're gonna do any two of these things, I'd probably do the first two that I mentioned before because the things that help the migrating motor complex are probably gonna be more helpful than the ones that prevent the growth of bacteria in the small intestine. The fourth intervention is practicing good eating hygiene. And this can indirectly help prevent the growth of bacteria in the small intestine. A couple things that eating hygiene refers to are, one is having minimal liquid during meals. The more liquid you drink during your meals, the more dilute your stomach acid will be. Stomach acid helps killing some of the bacteria that enter our body when we eat. So if you drink a lot of liquid when you eat, in theory, this means that more bacteria have a chance to survive. Also avoiding stressful activities during meals can be helpful. If you're stressed, your body is in this fight or flight mode. This means that our body is prioritizing survival. It does not care about digesting food. So in order to conserve energy, in order to fight or flight, your body's not gonna be secreting as much stomach acid, digestive enzymes, or bile. Thus, eating while stressed out, in theory, will hinder digestion and can allow more bacteria to survive. That is all for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please slam the like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to see daily when I post content. Feel free to check out my SIBO playlist as well, which is somewhere here on the screen in order to see dozens of more educational SIBO-related videos. Thank you so much for your support, and I'll see you next time.